This is the fifth video about my new folding woodworking workstation. Today I'll be showing you how to use and build a crosscut sled to use with a saw. This design is perfect for people who don't have a lot of space available in their garage. It's also ideal to take outside the workshop and have a table saw, router table and assembly table at your disposal whenever you need them. Thanks to its outfeed table, I've managed to obtain an 80 cm extra support surface at the exit point of the cut, or around 93 if we measure it from the back of the blade. I've cut some channels in both outfeed tabletops. They're aligned with the table saw's miter slots. This way I can continue using accessories such as the miter gauge and other jigs. I've cut them a little wider than the saw slots so that I won't have space problems with the sliders. The sled is flipped over and is part of the outfit table itself. This way I can have it on hand when I need it. Apart from that, the other advantages of this system are the fact that you save on plywood and it will be easier to take all the accessories outside the workshop. To hold the sled to the outfit table frame, I've used two pieces of a steel rod. I also fastened two small bits of plywood with screws to the back of the sled. These parts are inserted below the front piece of the outfit table and help keep the sled in place. Leveling the outfit table and the table saw is quite easy, thanks to the two knobs and the two leveling feet I've installed on the outfit table itself. Once it's leveled, the table can perfectly hold around 80 kilograms. These are the two plywood sliders I made so I can use the sled. I've designed them to be detachable so that I can use the sled as part of the outfit table. In order to set them up more quickly and accurately, I've used some pieces of a steel pipe and some round neodymium magnets of the same diameter as the pipe. I don't think the magnet is indispensable in order to use this system. Later on I'll show you how useful the Z-shaped slider is. Flipping the crosscut sled over the table saw worktop is this easy. And so is using it to make all sorts of cuts. Undoing this process is just as quick and uncomplicated. Before showing you all the possibilities that this crosscut sled has to offer, I'd like to make some cuts to showcase the advantages of having an outfit table such as this behind our table saw. After placing the fence, I'll try to cut this plywood piece that's around 170 centimeters long. Without a doubt, this table will help me cut relatively big boards in a more accurate and comfortable way. I'll avoid the common problem of the board falling off due to an insufficient support surface at the exit point of the cut. It's time to take a look at some examples of the sled in operation. After flipping it over, I'm going to show you how to detach the sled's zero clearance inserts. To do this, I have to loosen some bolts and remove them through the back of the sled. Here you can see the threaded inserts I've installed so that I can adjust the zero clearance to the thickness of the blade. Besides, this system will allow me to readjust the zero clearance inserts to the thickness of the blade as they get worn down. Now I'm going to fasten the track stop to the sled fence to make some cuts. I made a fence extension so that I can extend the track stop and cut longer work pieces.
In these cases, the wooden stops I made for use with the assembly table will come in handy. By loosening a couple of bolts, I can use this extension on both ends of the sled. You can even make a longer fence extension so that you can cut larger work pieces, like this one I made for my previous crosscut sled. I can also use the assembly table's dovetail clamps in this sled. They'll be very helpful in order to cut large work pieces safely, or work pieces with irregular shapes. In the sled's fence, I can also use hold down clamps to hold work pieces vertically. These jigs I showed in the previous video on the assembly table will come in handy when cutting pieces at an angle on this crosscut sled. You only need to insert them into the two channels on the sled and find out the desired cutting angle. Now I'm going to show you why I built another Z-shaped slider. It allows me to move this lead approximately 10 millimeters to the right, making it possible to use a dado stack. I'm going to change the saw blade. The next step is to replace the zero clearance with a different set meant to be used with this dado stack. I've designed this lead so that it can be used with a whole set, meaning I can cut dados up to 25 millimeters thick. After adjusting the zero clearance inserts of this lead, I'm going to swap out the other insert of the fence and run some tests. As you can see, this system allows me to cut channels into sensitive materials, such as this MDF board, with melamine on its sides without causing tear out. I can also do other jobs like cutting tenons.
just like the previous crosscut sled. By changing the fences insert, I can also use this sled to cut box joints. Before moving on, I'd like to talk about some other interesting points. In order to square this crosscut sled, you can use the five cut method. The fence is fastened to the base with four bolts that you can loosen, achieving enough play to move the fence as required. Maybe the idea of storing your crosscut sled this way is not appropriate to your working style. In this case, you could consider installing a whole board as an outfeed table by screwing it to the frame and store the crosscut sled somewhere else, or not make it at all. This way you can screw the slider to the base of the crosscut sled and you won't have to cut the two channels. Now I'll show you how to detach and store this workbench with these shots from my previous video. It's also a very quick and simple process. The only change compared to the last video is that I can also store the crosscut sled while attached to the outfit table once folded. Another good idea to store the outfit table once folded is to hang it on a wall with a crosscut sled facing forward so that you can grab it and use it more easily. This is the 3D SketchUp file included in the plans, available for download on my website. I'll leave a link in the video description if you're interested in making this design or making contributions to my work. Now I'll show you how to build this crosscut sled. I'll start by cutting some channels in the sled base. I'll use the dado stack. These channels must be aligned with the table saw miter slots. Now I'll cut the other so that I can use the dovetail clamps. I'll use the dado stack again to cut out as much as possible, making it easier later for the router bit. I'll finish these dovetail channels with the router table. In the two channels in the middle of the sled, I have to cut a rebate with a flat bit so that I can insert the dovetail clamps. I've installed a stop on the fence to make this process easier. It's time to pre-drill all the required holes to put the sled together. I'm going to drill them with a column drill, using countersink bits of the required diameter. Now I'm going to make the back part of the sled. I have to glue two pieces of plywood together to achieve the desired thickness. Once the glue is dry, I finish shaping this piece on the bandsaw and screw it to the base using the holes I drilled earlier. I'm going to machine the sled's aluminum profile. I'll use the miter gauge and an aluminum cutting blade I've installed on the table saw. First I cut the profile lengthwise, and then I make a gap for the profile's plywood insert. I finish this gap with an oscillating tool and a file.
I drill the two holes that will allow me to fasten this lead to the outfeed table frame. Now I'm going to use four bolts and nuts to fasten the profile to the base. Looks like everything's correct, so I'm going to make the front plywood piece. I mark and drill all the required holes in this part. This time I'll use four flat nuts to join this piece to the aluminum profile. Now I can cut the central gap in this lead. I'll use the table saw along with its fence. I'll use the same blade to cut out all the required material on the front and back of this lead. Now I have to disassemble this lead so that I can keep proceeding. I'll use this opportunity to pre-drill the two required holes to lock the fence extension. I drill with a bit and use a tap to thread it. I'll use the router table again to make the rebate required to install the adjustable zero clearance. Here it's important to run some tests to ensure we're not cutting too deep with the bit. After that I'm going to mark the position of the threaded inserts so that I can fasten the zero clearance to the sled. MDF is not the best material to install threaded inserts, especially so close to the edge. I don't think you'll have any trouble with plywood, but if you use MDF as well, try to make the holes a little bit wide, almost with the same diameter as the threaded inserts, so that the board isn't strained. You can even glue the inserts on with epoxy. Now I'm going to make the zero clearance for this table. I'll use 5mm thick MDF. I've cut them to size and marked the positions of the holes so that I can drill them with the column drill. I'm going to stick them together with double-sided tape so that I can machine them both at the same time. I finished this step with a file and a bit. I could also do this step with a handheld router and guides. I've set up the router table to make the final cuts to use these zero clearance inserts. I'll use the miter gauge and a stop so that all the rebates are the same. Time to make the fence extension to extend the miter track stop. I drill two holes with a bit and thread them with a tap. I cut the two steel pipes to size and make sure everything works as intended. I'm also going to fasten the two small pieces of plywood to the back part of the sled. I'm going to make two sliders for use with the sled. After cutting them to size, I use the router table to cut the necessary rebates. Here it's important to cut the material out little by little, ensuring every now and then the sliders fit into the channels. I drill the holes required to insert the steel pipes, but before anything else, I'll use the holes to mark the sled base. I cut the three steel pipe pieces to size and use epoxy glue to fasten the magnets to the sled base and cyanoacrylate to fasten the steel pipe to the sliders. Finally, I can start putting the sled together. Its first mission will be to cut the zero clearance inserts to size.
Next, I'll use it to make an insert for the aluminum profile. I mark the hole so that I can install it, put the washers in place and screw in the insert. Now I have to make the necessary cuts on the front and back of the sled. I'm also going to attach the two pieces of steel pipe to the outfit table frame so that it can hold the sled. Finally, all that's left is to glue on the measured tape to the aluminum profile. I use a previously measured piece of plywood to install it in its exact emplacement. That's all for today. In a few days I'll upload the next video in this series, where I'll be showing you all this folding woodworking workstation can do. Thank you for watching this video until the end.